Hi, my name is Simon Marlow and I've written a book called The Rise in Prediabetes, The Threat of Insulin Resistance and Hyperglycemia. This book shows three practical steps to controlling prediabetes, which is a precursor to type 2, but you can stop this condition before it becomes a disease. I was diagnosed pre-diabetic back in 98 at age 43. I'm now 57. I'm still pre-diabetic, but my blood glucose levels have not risen. In fact, they're reducing. My lifestyle is the same, but I've learned how food and drink affects the glucose in my blood. I still eat and drink what I want, when I want, but I now know the secret to managing my blood glucose after eating and drinking. In my book, I explain the three easy to implement practical steps to managing blood glucose. Learn how you too can do this and still live the life you desire. So what is prediabetes? Well, people with prediabetes have blood glucose levels higher than normal, but not yet high enough to indicate type 2. Most people with prediabetes don't have any symptoms at all, but they are at higher risk of developing heart disease. Your body produces a hormone called insulin, which helps your cells use the energy found in food. Now with diabetes, either your body doesn't make enough insulin or doesn't use it efficiently. When glucose builds up in the blood, it can damage the kidneys, heart, eyes and nervous system. So with prediabetes, the subtle balance between glucose and insulin has been thrown off. The pancreas, which makes insulin, may not be able to produce enough insulin after a meal to clear the incoming blood glucose. Or more likely, cells have become insulin resistant. When cells are insulin resistant, they don't allow insulin to escort glucose from the bloodstream into the cells, resulting in body fatigue. So too much glucose in the blood is called high blood sugar or hyperglycemia. With prediabetes you're at a 50% higher risk of heart disease and stroke rather than someone who does not have any prediabetes. So take this warning sign seriously but don't panic. You have time to sort this out with only moderate changes to your lifestyle. So how is prediabetes diagnosed? To determine if you have prediabetes your doctor can perform one of three blood tests fasting plasma glucose, hemoglobin A1c, or last oral glucose tolerance test. Fasting plasma glucose can be done after an overnight fast or fasting for 8 hours during the day. It's relatively easy, inexpensive, a simple blood test is all that is needed to measure your blood glucose. So what do the, number mean, what do the numbers mean when you get them back? In milligrams per deciliter, which is the US standard, less than 100 means you're normal. 100 to 125, you're pre-diabetic. Greater than 125, you're diabetic. In millimoles per liter, which is more European than the rest of the world, less than 5.6 is normal. 5.6 to 6.9 is pre-diabetes. Greater than 7 is diabetes. People with prediabetes are considered to have impaired fasting glucose. In most cases, your doctor will repeat any abnormal test before confirming his diagnosis. Normally, three tests are used to, to confirm your condition, spaced about three to four months apart. The hemoglobin A1c test is a simple blood test that reflects the average blood sugar over a three to four months period. This test is normally carried out in conjunction with the fast fasting glucose test that as mentioned previously. So what do the numbers mean? Less than 5.6% you're normal, 5.7 to 6.4 you're pre-diabetic and greater than 6.5 you're diabetic. How is the oral glucose tolerance test done? First you have the fasting glucose test then you take a high sugar solution to challenge your body to clear the glucose from your blood. After a two-hour period, another blood glucose test is done. The final test results indicate whether you have a normal pre-diabetic or diabetic blood glucose level. So again, what do the numbers mean? In milligrams per deciliter, less than 140, you're normal. 140 to 199, you're pre-diabetic. 
greater than 200, you're diabetic. In millimoles per litre, less than 7.8, you're normal. 7.8 to 11, you're pre-diabetic. Greater than 11, you're diabetic. So how common is pre-diabetes? Well, you're not alone. About 79 million people in the US over the age of 20 have pre-diabetes. It's an epidemic in the making. Why you should take pre-diabetes seriously? It's a clear warning sign. It signals the likely onset of a more serious condition if not managed. It can begin the process of doing damage to your heart and possibly other organs such as the kidneys, eyes and nervous system as mentioned before. So the lifestyle changes uh, for pre-diabetes. Moderate to minor lifestyle changes can help people with pre-diabetes delay or even prevent the onset of full-blown diabetes. There are three practical steps to stop the onset of diabetes. Look at your diet, watch what you're doing for exercise, and always monitor progress. Diet and exercise does not mean starving yourself, nor working out strenuously every day. Obese and overweight people, however, are specifically at high risk of having pre-diabetes turn into diabetes. Sensible diet and gentle exercise can nearly eradicate the risk. Diet and exercise, if done correctly, reduces blood glucose and weight. Losing 5 to 10% of your body mass can significantly reduce the risk of diabetes. So here are a few tips on exercise. Moderate aerobic exercise for 20 minutes, three times a week, such as cycling, swimming, or brisk walking. Reduces blood glucose and so helps prevent pre-diabetes becoming diabetes. But, different body types require different types of exercise. Always, always, always check with your doctor before starting an exercise plan or increasing your activity level. A few tips on diet. Healthy meals that mix a balance of low-fat protein, vegetables and whole grains can help prevent pre-diabetes from becoming diabetes. Calorie control, portion sizes and low glycemic foods all help to manage pre-diabetes. Please try to avoid or minimize those foods and drinks that are high in calories with large glycemic index and glycemic load. You can control your pre-diabetes by creating a healthier lifestyle. This does not need to be arduous, in fact it can be fun. If you are pre-diabetic then now is the time to find out how to manage this condition. If in doubt, seek out a dietitian to help balance your calorie and glycemic intake. Know your food and drink. Understand how to use your excess calories. Monitor your progress. This is all explained in my book, The Rise of Pre-Diabetes. My book explains three very simple practical steps to stop pre-diabetes becoming diabetes. If you want to get all the facts in one place and find out how easy pre-diabetes is to manage, then you can pick up this book in paperback at Amazon or an ebook format on the Kindle, Nook and iPad, um, again at Amazon, Barnes & Noble and iBookstores as well as Google Play. Or you can purchase my book online. But don't wait. Do this now. Don't become another diabetes statistic. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.